Hello everyone, 3D Hero here, and welcome to another Title 2 loadout video, where I bring you new loadouts to try every once a week. Today's loadout is going to be another Frontier Defense build that will focus on a more aggressive playstyle using a rather odd weapon called the Charge Rifle, as is the main primary. Today's special pilot is the Charge Sniper, who has come straight from Title Assault into the fray, and he's kind of an experimental pilot, as I never really thought of him to be effective in Frontier Defense, but you'd be quite surprised. Now the Charge Sniper is someone who is specifically designed for sitting back at strategic locations and taking pop shot by enemies from the other side of the map, and assists through what he does best, which, if used incorrectly and place him in a well protected area, can really help out in clutch moments. But I don't want to go with that playstyle, since 1. It's rather boring watching the player stay in one spot all game, and 2. Not all snipers have to be campy, some can be a little bit more mobile and highly destructive when needed to move, so I've changed the layout to be more aimed towards a mobile sniper with his trusty titan backing him up in heated exchanges. So, like always, let's take a look at the main loadout. Your class will be the Pulse Blade for visually looking the closest to the Charge Sniper, but if you want to be a lot more mobile than normal, then I advise you to pick the Grapple class, which, although it doesn't look anything like the Charge Sniper in Type 4 Assault, the class can allow you to move about a lot more faster and quicker compared to the rest. But I'll leave this up to you to decide. I decided to go with the Pulse Blade as it kind of fitted me perfectly, he looks slightly like the Charge Sniper, except from the helmet, and with the Pulse Blade, I am allowed to use my class ability, to which I can actually locate enemies in certain areas. Not that effective, since in front of defense you have a map that tells you where the enemies are, but it can come in handy in some cases, especially when they're in buildings and you can't exactly tell. Your primary in this case can be anything you want, as you won't be using it at all. Instead, you will be using the Charge Rifle as your main primary, instead, with a sidearm of your choice. If you want, you can run double pistols, which can help with clearing up enemies, that make a beeline to your objective. Or, if you want to go dual ocelot on everyone. Your secondary now will be the RE45, as its overall flexibility. And your ordnance will be the Firestar, for its overall effectiveness against both titans and enemies, and great at stopping them from advancing or distracting them. Your anti-titan weaponry will be of course the charge rifle, with a charge hack mod, so you can fire it much faster for less damage. Or, you can leave it how it is, so you can get more damage for a slower charge. Your Titan will be the Monarch, with an aggressive perk tree to increase the survival when on their own, as currently shown. This is what I currently went with, and it kind of fit my playstyle, as with all these upgraded, he's allowed to be a lot more flexible on the field, and he can do a lot more damage against other enemies. And I decided to also add in a Titan Auto Chip, as I wanted Monarch to be fully upgraded and powerful to the point of not needing me to pilot him all the time. He would just follow me and support me as best as possible, even though 90% of the time, all the titans barely protect themselves. It's a 50-50 kind of loadout that I decided to go with, as in one case, you're going to have to fully upgrade Monarch from point from square 1 to all the way to max level. And then once you get up to max level, you can then currently just leave him how he is, and then he can just follow you and support you. And with the current skill tree I decided to go with, it's very powerful. It can take on a bunch of titans and enemies alike and he can do a lot of damage on his own without you actually needing to be there. The only time you'll actually have to support him though is when he gets swarmed by enemies and in front of defense that's gonna be a lot of times. And lastly your pilot kit now will be the ordnance expert and hover for non-stop on the move and aggressive sniping no matter where you are. So like I said with his load up you want to play slightly more aggressive with the charge rifle and not stay in one spot all the time as you want to make good use of your charge rifle and use it against the enemy AI and titans that will base rush you, to which it can play out very well if you harass them enough so that you can focus on just you. So what I mean by harass, I mean generally try to rodeo them as much as possible, use your fire star on them, use your titan on them, try and make them focus a lot on you so that your teammates can try to sneak in behind and get their attention. And if you keep doing that, it will allow you to actually you know, kind of corner them and basically allow to destroy them much more quicker. You can also add in some sentry turrets in ideal locations you know enemies will spawn in, which can benefit you in two ways. One, it can get you some credits to use and spend on the armory, which is a big bonus for you. But secondly, they can act kind of like a sensor or a warning sign, if one or more enemies are advancing and not stopping. You can use this to your advantage to pinpoint where the enemies are and rush over there to put a stop to them. For example, if you use like a sentry on war games, 9 times out of 10, most enemies tend to spawn on the outside lanes, but most of the cases, you'll be on the other side and some of your teammates won't be in the ideal location where the enemies will be, you know, making a beeline to the objective. Now, if you put a sentry turret there and they get destroyed, 
it will come up on your radar and it will also be notified to you saying that your sentry has been destroyed. This will indicate to you that, okay, if I've been destroyed, that means the enemy is pushing up. That means you can make a beeline to that area and stop the enemy from advancing. This is kind of how I used it to kind of warn me when things get really heated. The only downside to using this loadout is a charge up time for your charge rifle. Since you have to charge it per shot, it can be tricky to use in the heated situations. But at the same time, that's why you should always stay on the go. And at all times, you should ideally have Monarch with you, upgraded or not, so that he can fully support you. Because 9 times out of 10, the only time you should be standing still when taking shots at enemies is when there's an enemy at long distance and you know for a fact you can't get up close because he will destroy you. So for example, Legion, sometimes when they use their power shot, or even Ronin. I've, I've noticed that Ronin, 9 times out of 10, when they see me, they will either stun me straight away, melee me, or worse, use a shotgun, which is going to be an instant one-shot kill no matter what. So I either keep my distance against those guys, or if I know I've got a good chance against them, I will either sneak up on them, rodeo them, do as much damage as I possibly can, and then back away and let even my friendlies come in or let my titan finish them off. This is honestly not all that special for a build, and nothing too crazy, but it's a change for fun, and it is something you can fully maximise well in front of defence, since it's viable against all enemies present. You may struggle at times, but that's why you kind of want to play with it and practice as much as possible so you get a good feel and grasp of it. I thought I would try this in a multiplayer at first, but realise you have limited amount of ammo for your charge rifle. And it would be a little bit more harder to pull off against players who are using faster time to kill weapons, as it, like I said, probably would be a true challenge for me. You guys can go ahead and try to use this loadout in multiplayer, but I will tell you now, you will most likely rage a lot using this. So, if you're the type of person that wants to try the charge rifle playstyle and fully use it as a weapon on its own rather than rely on other common gear and weapons that you see most other players use, then why not give this pleasant loadout a try? And tell me your thoughts in the comment section, as I would genuinely love to hear what you genuinely think of it. So, that is the end of my video, I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then by all means, leave a like, a comment, and subscribe for more. If you didn't, then by all means, leave a dislike. I understand, and I know what to improve on in the near future. So once again, thank you all for watching and I do hope to see you again soon.